Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland, and I'm continuing my series about uh, the history of Germany, 1918 to 45, for A level. So the question I'm asking today is, who were the Nazis? Well, it was the German Workers' Party that was founded uh, in Munich in January 1919, so just after the armistice was signed. Uh, some of its uh, members, notably Anton Trexler, had been um, active uh, in the First World War in politics, as well as in the army, campaigning to fight to the bitter end and not sign an armistice. So they rejected the idea of the armistice right from the beginning. So Adolf Hitler joined them a few months later, rapidly became leader. Then they put the words National Socialist on the front of the party's name. So it was National Socialist German Workers' Party, NSDAP. But that's so long, they just used to generally call it the Nazis as uh, an acronym. So it drew on a number of strains in German political life that went back to the 19th century. Um, now, I'm not saying these were majority strains, but there were certainly a, significant, certainly a significant number of people subscribed to some of their beliefs, such as uh, this notion of racial superiority, and they thought that applied to Aryans, which were really Northern Europeans. Um, and uh, obviously it's a nonsense, and Northern Europeans and Eastern Europeans, for example, can't really be distinguished, or believing that even whites are significantly different from other races, which is bunkum. Anyway, um, and they despised other ethnic groups. They detested Jewish people most of all. Um, so they were a very curious uh, melange of left-wing and right-wing views. They talked about social justice and claimed they'd help the poor. They um, fulminated against the boss class. They loathed big business. They uh, spoke about revolution. And they had a strange affection for conspiracy theories. They uh, vilified financiers. They had no time for monarchies. Uh, and they detested the German royal houses for marrying Slavs and other racial groups. So they're very bigoted towards Eastern Europeans. So despite being poles apart, the Nazis and communists did cross over into what, each one another's movements and hated each other's guts. So it's not an uncommon phenomenon. One's enemy is actually usually quite similar to oneself. A case in point being Roland Freisler, that communist who became a Nazi and later sentenced some of the um, anti-Hitler plotters to excruciating deaths, being hanged by piano wire, slowly hanged to strangle them, not break their necks. As Hit Churchill was to say in the two movements, they were opposites, though similar. Now, I've got to admit, there was some good in communism, there was some genuine concern for social justice, and some people went into it believing they could, could build a better civilization. Obviously, it started to go very badly wrong quite, quite soon on. Whereas Nazism, it's hard to see of any... Uh, admirable motivation in joining that party. So they had their 25 point, pro point program, their goals, the removal of Jewish people from German life, um, German citizenship was to only be for Aryans, which meant ethnic Germans or people from other uh, Northern European nationalities, the uh, um, uh, cancellation of the Treaty of Versailles, a total opposition to communism, the ac acquisition of living space in Eastern Europe, the abolition of income unearned by work that was targeted at the rentier class, as in those who owned extra property and rented them out, or stock market speculators and the like. The redistribution of the um, property of large companies, particularly trusts, um, to small family owned businesses. The um, removal of all people who'd entered Germany since 1914. The maintenance of a healthy middle class, whatever that means. Uh, the death penalty for those who'd profited from the war. Uh, the unification of all Germans within uh, Greater Germany. Uh, positive Christianity, again, they're very vague. Um, so that they did not decide with either Protestantism or Catholicism, because that would be divisive of Germany at unity. Um, and as Hitler wrote in his book, Mein Kampf, he thought there ought to be no contradiction between German identity and being a passionate Catholic. So... The Nazis say they were not power-hungry, and once their aims were realised, the party would dissolve itself. So they took national pride to an extreme, and they not only liked their own country, they abominated other ones. Uh, so being a proud German equated for them with detesting other racial groups and thinking they were inferior. They were exceptionally militaristic, they gloried in violence, and they were egregiously merciless towards the, the, those they disliked. So, like other political parties, the Nazis had their own paramilitary wing, people wearing uniforms. The SA Storm Detachment was founded very soon after the party. 
Some members of the SA were called SA men, or stormtroopers, or brown shirts. There'd been real stormtroopers in the First World War who'd been in an elite unit, and they'd been penetrating deep into enemy lines trying to disrupt communications. And uh, really, from March 1918, they'd been active in Operation Michael, or Kaiser's Schlacht, as it was called. Um, they suffered very high casualties, so not many of them survived the war. So the people in the SA, very few of them had been actual stormtroopers in the um, First World War. So the SA were giving themselves a name they didn't deserve, these crack troops. So the Communist Party had the Red Front. Uh, so uh, the Red Front uh, was uh, their armed organization to fight off people trying to disrupt their uh, rallies and to then go and wreck the rallies of rival parties. The Jungdo, Young German Order, that was the German Democratic Party, the DDP. Um, the Stahlhelm, which is literally steel helmet of the German National People's Party, DNVP. And the Centre Party, curiously, didn't have its own private army, um, nor indeed did the German People's Party, DVP. So these organisations, they need sufficient muscle to, to protect their meetings. Um, some people who were in these paramilitary groups didn't believe or disbelieve in the ideology, they were just hired knuckleheads. Um, there was no television, um, and so this was free entertainment. Not many people had radios to begin with either. So within the SA, uh, the SS was formed um, in 1929, SS, Schutzstaffel, protection squads, and the letters SS were written like bolts of lightning. Heinrich Himmler was in charge of it. Later, the SS was taken out of the SA and became a separate organization within the Nazi movement. So the SS was there to guard Hitler, um, and they were supposed to be um, the best, as in uh, particularly tall and muscular and all the rest of it. Um, so uh, Himmler personally inspected the photos of all applicants with a magnifying glass, uh, anyway, so the Nazi movement was very chauvinistic towards women. They firmly believed in the division of roles. They were aghast at the fact that the Weimar Republic had allowed women to vote, and even some had been elected to the Reichstag. This horror at uh, female political participation did not prevent the uh, Nazis sedulously courting the female vote. It's one of the reasons Hitler didn't marry. Didn't marry. He thought it was uh, more alluring to female voters. The masses are my bride, as he said. So the Nazis uh, detested over-cultured intellectuals. Uh, there was a line from a Brecht play. When I hear the word culture, I reach my revolver. Brecht was a uh, communist playwright. who was in Germany at this time. Um, so the Nazis had this very anti-intellectual ethos. They, they did have a few academics on their side. Um, so they loathed pacifism, Marxism, and all the rest of it. Uh, so they disliked Christianity for various reasons. They believed different races were locked in a mortal struggle, and therefore the idea of Christian brotherhood was anathema to them. Um, anyway, so they had a lot of support from the uh, lower middle class, and particularly in rural areas. The Nazis peaked in their popularity in July 1932, winning 37% of the vote. The Chancellor, Franz von Papen, offered them the chance to be part of a coalition, but they turned it down. Hitler said this was not good enough. And Goebbels, his propaganda chief, said it was better to go on struggling for another decade than accept such an agreement. So some right-wingers were repulsed by the Nazis, who they rightly viewed as brutal, and Hitler was a vulgar rabble-rouser. Uh, they also disliked him for, for class reasons. Then November 1932, the Nazis had gone down to 33% of the vote. Um, there was a political impasse, and so the mainstream parties, they needed the Nazis in there to form a viable government. Kurt von Schleicher was the chancellor, the red general, as they called him. He wasn't really red. He was had mildly left-wing views, but it was highly unusual for a man of his class, which is why he was uh, misleadingly labelled red. Anyway, his weak government finally fell in January 1933, and a new coalition was cobbled together, this time Hitler as chancellor, Franz von Papen of the Centre Party as vice-chancellor. And only two other Nazis in the cabinet besides Hitler. Otherwise, this is the DNVP, DVP, and the Centre Party. Um, the head of the Reichsbank was Dr. Hjalmar Schacht, and uh, he convinced President von Hindenburg that Hitler would be good news for the economy. So President von Hindenburg was a Prussian nobleman, and he was a decorated uh, war hero. He felt disdain for the Nazis as um, being louts. Um, but his mind was failing him. Uh, he was suffering senile dementia, and uh, his son Oscar held great sway over him, and he managed to induce his father to sign the appointment of Hitler as Chancellor. 
so the SA paraded for victory and on the 30th of January 1933 Hitler became Chancellor and Hitler and von Hindenburg reviewed the SA from a balcony. New elections were scheduled for March 1933.